Hey, welcome back. Um, a very good friend of mine asked me to do a little commission, non-paying. I wouldn't take any money from her anyway. She just acquired a horse. The horse's name is Tallulah. She wants a sign for the entrance to the stall with Tallulah on it and two hyacinths on either side. And she asked, since I have the CNC, she said, could you do this for me? Never, don't even ask twice. I'm going to do this for you. So the font she chose, and I'm not good with remembering these things, is uh, Aras, Aras, Medium, ITC, whatever. It's kind of a 1930s-ish font. Um, the letter parts are a little narrow, so I'm going with a 60-degree bit to give them more depth. Um, that was easy. I, I had the font in my system. I had to go get some hyacinth images and turn them into raster files and stick them on either side of the name, which I've done. This is not a tutorial on how to use vCarve. Um, I'm not well versed enough to teach how to use it. There's plenty of great videos out on YouTube on how to use vCarve. But this screenshot here shows the finished drawing ready for the test cut. You see the, the two hyacinths and Tallulah in the middle. And after I finish a drawing like this, I can test cut it in the machine, in the software. And this screenshot here is the test cut in the software, and after I did this and looked at it, I was very satisfied with what I saw. So, let's go take that drawing, turn it into a tap file, which is, a, is the G-code to run the CNC machine, bring it in here, and cut out a test piece on some MDF. So I've cut out the test piece, it's 5x18, mark the center of it to index it in the CNC. Um, I'm going to clamp it to my spoil board. The spoil board is, um, drove a whole lot of holes in it and a whole lot of 1032 inserts. That's one way of doing it. There's plenty of ways of doing it. I made my own clamps. They're red oak. Uh, they have a step in the back so that they, uh, when you clamp them down, you can get a lot of tension on the workpiece. And you can clamp uh, anywhere from one quarter to three quarter inch pieces with that step. So the first thing to do is to set a distance from the edge, and it can be arbitrary in this case. There, and there, and there. And that's not final. So bring the clamp up, clamp this down here, clamp this down here at this end. With the friction underneath that plate, the piece of MDF, nothing's going to move. So I check my distance here. That's good. Check it there. All right, so now I've got it. Same distance on either end of the test piece, and I'll finish tightening this down. So that's ready to go into the CNC now and index it. If I'm going to do a batch job, you know, a lot of the same part, what I'll do is I'll put a little strip of wood down here with um, pin nails and another piece of wood here with pin nails. That way I can, once I get the first workpiece in there and indexed and cut, I can then take that workpiece out and continue to put workpieces in and they're going to wind up in the same spot. And I've done that with some of the heddles I've made for my wife's um, uh, tape loom projects that she's done. But this is a one-time deal, so I've got the spoil board out right now for, the, for what I was doing with the CNC machine a couple of days ago. And I'll put it back in, index it, and we'll be ready to make the cut. So as you've seen in my, uh, some of my other videos, I'm sitting down in the stool, working on the CNC machine, setting it up, because it's against the wall and low on a small bench, desk, whatever this thing is. That's going to change when I do the shop. It's going to be waist high against a wall, mounted on a wall, but that's, uh, episode, that's for another episode. So, work piece is in place. I index the spoil board against this edge of the, of the CNC table. Like I said, I'm going to be using a 60 degree bit. Hope you can see that focus. Gives the letters a little more depth. Just clamp that in place. Um, turn on the CNC machine, boom, beep, they all beep. All right, so control panel. I don't know how well you can see that, but yeah, okay. Now I'm going to put this into the slot. You know what they say about USB drives, you put them in three, four times before they get in right. So you see the screen, this is all the controls I have. So right now I want to go, um, 
I want to go near, which brings it this way. As, as I, uh, I must describe something to you. Draw something that's linear, long like this, to cut. I can't leave it on the page in the drawing like this, because the machine thinks it's going side to side. So I have to flip it 90 degrees, put it in there as, a, as the G-code file, and then go from there. So what I want to do is I want to bring this down. Move my light down here a little bit. And line it up with that X. All right, so there's just about dead on there. I don't have to be perfect because I said this is a test piece. And front to back is fine. All right, so that's... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down just a, just a, tat, just a touch more. I'm going to set that as zero. Yes, zero, zero. So that's the surface of the workpiece. Zero, zero. And all three axes. Now, now, I'm going to bring it up. I've got a test plate that allows me to get far, even more accurate. Put the plate in there. Go to plate. OK. Test. Red means it's there. Hit OK. Now this will run down. When it touches the plate, it'll back off. It says, I know I'm now exactly 375 thousandths away from the surface of the workpiece. That's done. OK. So I want to bring it up again. Put on the dust collector hood. That's held up with rare, rare earth magnets. That's pretty cool, actually. So to make sure I've got everything correct, the first thing I'm going to do once I hit start is hold my finger over the stop button just in case I made a, made a mistake somewhere. It's just being safe. So let me get my ear protection on because this thing is awful loud. All right, so I'm going to go to USB. I'm going to pick uh, Tallulah, tab file, next, and there's the start and stop buttons, which I'm going to rest my hands over when I start it. The dust collector will automatically come on when the router starts up. I've got a little electronic box for that. Well, okay then, <clears throat> it's all cut out. Now, let's get this out of here and take a good look at it and see if we're happy with it. I said that came out pretty good. So Tallulah, high synth on either end. I'm thinking of making it a little longer and then putting a little radius on either saw end and then doing an edge detail, just probably just a chamfer, something simple, elegant, understated. Like I said, it's either gonna be mahogany or cherry, um, but that's it. I think we're doing good. I don't know who what's going to come out first, if she's going to get this first or the video is going to come out first. But anyway, she knows what's coming, so it's not like I'm going to surprise her. Um, CNC at its best. So the next thing to do is to get the piece of wood I'm going to make this out of, the final piece of wood, mill it to the sizes that I want, and then cut it. I, I know that the, the, the tap file is going to work fine. So let's cut some real, let's cut some real wood now. And that piece of wood is this. This is a nice piece of uh, mildly figured cherry. Uh, i got some sapwood on the back of this piece. Um, what I need to do is I can get what I need to make the sign out of from right about here, illuminating the sapwood. It's going to be outside, so I don't want the sapwood to be in, you know, exposed to the elements. Anyhow, I just need to mill the top of it uh, smooth, then take some off the back and cut out my piece and uh, the, uh, the owner of Tallulah has uh, requested keyhole mounts on the back of this. So I'll put metal keyhole mounts on the back because she can take it from one stall to another stall if uh, Tallulah moves from one stall to another. So let's get busy and uh, we'll mill this out. I uh, don't know if I'll record that or not. We'll mill this out and then take it to the CNC and cut out the final sign. Milled. Marked, ready for indexing. Uh, I'm going to put it in the machine, just let it run. 
and then uh, come out and I'll do the radi radiuses at either end. I'm still deciding what kind of uh, edge profile I want to do in this. Uh, I'm still kind of leaning towards a simple chamfer for, for, just a, for the elegance of it. Anyhow, let's cut this out. Finished and cut out. Looks pretty good. Um, it's got some nice figure in it. So let's wet it with some uh, mineral spirits and see what this might, oh yeah. That's gonna look really nice when it's done. And it's gonna age very nicely as well. Um, it'll darken with age, of course. And I don't know if you can see in the, yeah, you can see it, just barely see it, but I've got this arc up here. Uh, it did that at both ends. And that's what I'm gonna cut into it. So, almost done. Tallulah almost has her, uh, her nameplate. I gotta go down to the store, not today, we're in the middle of a snowstorm, uh, and get those uh, keyhole hangers for the back of this and let them into the back. And I'm gonna make a template so that you can get the screws mounted to the correct place on the, on the door and hang the sign. So if I'm not around when she wants to move this, she's got this template, drill the holes there, put the screws in there, and bam, you're ready to go. Anyhow, uh, let me, uh, let's do some more work to this. Make it look pretty. As you saw in that um, time lapse, I did in fact do the nice radius curve here. I did a chamfer all the way around it to give it a little, a little depth. And to add a little more depth, I relief cut the back. See, I did a relief cut on the back. And the relief cut is to have it stand off a little bit from the door, so it kind of looks like it's floating a little bit. Next thing I gotta do, obviously, is, is do the mortises for the, um, for the keyhole hangers, and then put a finish on it mount the keyhole hangers and put a finish on it. So let's, let's get on with it. What I just did was a test cut in this MDF to inlet the keyhole hanger into the back of the sign. So I did an uh, inletting for the device itself, then I did a further inletting for the screw that's going to come in behind on, the, on this and hook it on, onto the wall. Now I drew it up in AutoCAD first, this drawing right here. I want you to note the orientation of the drawing. It's vertical. Vertical in V-Carve means front to back in the machine in G-Code, not, right, not left to right. If you orient it this way, that's left to right in the machine. So when you finish doing a drawing with lettering, anything like this, you have to flip it vertically before you save it as a tap file or G-Code file so the machine will go in the right direction. It's why I hold my finger over the stop button before, when I'm doing it. In case I did that, made that mistake and didn't do it. So now the next thing, of course, is to inlet these into the sign and then start putting the finish on. Make it look really, really nice. And there it is, perfect fit. Uh, haven't screwed it in. Notice it's off center from the center line because you want it to hang down on the screws. Put the weight on the screws. Uh, yeah, finish. Gotta put the finish on. I'm gonna start with uh, a spit coat and then some exterior spar varnish. That's the boring part, finishing. I'll show you the steps in between. Well, for some reason um, that I've yet to figure out, and I did turn the camera on, the segment of me putting this first coat on didn't uh, record. But anyhow, 50% spar varnish, 50% mineral spirits, so it soaks into the wood, and you, you could see it being drawn into the wood as I laid this coat on. Now. This will get one more coat like this. It'll get sanded with 320, and then the rest of the coats will be 100% spar varnish. And that should give it a nice, nice, uh, nice deep, deep gloss and color. Anyhow, uh, now we wait. Oh, I have to cover this with linum, aluminum foil so it won't dry and I can use it again six hours from now. Well, it's done. Multiple coats of uh, spar varnish. I use Helmsman spar varnish on this. And after the varnish had cured, I 
gave it a light sanding, then brushed it out with 4-0 uh, stuff, 4-0 steel wool, and then a coat, a coat of nice paste wax. Now this is not going to sit directly in the weather. It's going to be under an awning that sits where, where the stalls are. And I've got the keyhole hangers in the back. And uh, you know when you hang things like this that have two of them and you kind of get the holes in the right place in the wall, measure twice, drill once kind of thing. So what I did for my friend is I made a template. What it has here, oops, upside down. It has holes drilled exactly where the screws need to be to hang this thing on the wall. So that's it. Tallulah has a name board. Until next time, make great things out of wood.